A third of the way through the season, let's take some stock here of what these Celtics really are. Plus, are we a little bit nervous about the Detroit Pistons? And how much separation can these guys gain from the rest of the East? We're doing it all right now with a special guest. It's this guy. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here in the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day and I got you every day with a free fresh podcast that drops directly to your device when you subscribe. So go ahead, open up your favorite podcasting app, subscribe to the show. You can also do the same thing on YouTube. Hop into the comment section there. Let me know what you're thinking about these Boston Celtics, especially ahead of this game Thursday. I don't know, man. Biggest game of the season against the the 27 loss in a row Detroit Pistons. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about getting some separation and we'll talk about the state of the Celtics. We're going to do it all. Uh, first of all, today's show is brought to you by prize picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Uh, go to prizepickscom slash lockdown NBA. Use the code uh, lockdown NBA, all lowercase for a first deposit match of up to $100. So uh, today we got a special guest here. Uh, normally, I'm, I'm I'm taking these off days with Tom Westerholm. No, 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 no. Upgrade to be ever ready. The <laughs> man you you heard, you just you hear his voice. You're part of every show. You're a constant on every show because you are the man behind the theme song. So everybody who asks me in the comment section, hey, who does that theme song? This is the guy right here. This this guy. How you doing, man? Good to see you again. Good, good, good to be here, man. I really appreciate uh, you bringing me on the platform. Uh, such a blessing to be, uh, you know, the guy who replaced Millie's on the theme song. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just yeah. a fan. I'm just a fan. I, I, well, listen, listen, I hope I hope you follow in Millie's footsteps because he, he is blown up and uh, I feel kind of awkward asking him to do a theme song. And uh, he doesn't. He doesn't need. He doesn't need this Celtics. This, right. this lockdown Celtics bump. You know, he's. Right. We've already launched his career. All right. We've <laughs> already done that. Listen, you know, we've already launched I'm, his I'm, career. That's right. That's right. I'm just following in a path that's been laid. There it is. There it is. Platinum is on on the way. So, yeah. um, uh, so uh, this is this is gonna be a lot of fun. So let, let's just let's dive in. Well, first of all, this is your second appearance on the show because that's once right. upon a time, you, if I'm not mistaken, you won my version of Celtics Jeopardy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. I'm true blue, uh, true green Celtics fan <laughs> um, from way back. I'm an 80s kid, so absolutely. Yep. So we're of the same generation. I got I to gotta do Celtics Jeopardy again in the offseason. That was fun. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's start with this. You, you, you've, we were talking just a briefly before we started the show, uh, and I was like, yeah, crazy season. You're like, no, 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 this season is amazing. So let, let's get you just to take stock, man. You, you've been watching this team. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your feeling here as the Celtics, uh, we're about a third of third of the way through They're what 21 and six tops in the, in the NBA. How are you uh, feeling about this squad right now? Man, I'm feeling real good. Um, I, I think 23, isn't it 23 now and six, but is it 23? Hey, I got look, 23 hey, and six. Know. Yeah. 23 and six. All right. I'm still, <laughs> no, nah, no, no. Uh, I, I, I gotta be accurate. I don't know why I, I, the last, I'm so, worried, I'm so worried about the Detroit Pistons and this is really <laughs> only water. This is only water in my cup. So I don't uh, even have that too. excuse of having something else in there. Uh, yeah. yes. 23 and six. Yeah, They've yeah, won. Yeah. They're winning, uh, over 79% of their games. Man. Uh, number one team in the NBA. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I'm really enjoying the season. I think, um, you know, starting out with the off season, you know, we were up and down in our feelings, right? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, uh, you know, we not re-signing Grant, you know, we trading Marcus Smart, who's our heart, you know, all these things were going on. But then it's like, all right, we got Porzingis. Okay, that's a big move. Mm -hmm. We got Drew Holiday. 
okay, that's another big move. So, you know, you're kind of up and down in your feelings a little bit in the offseason and stepping right into the season. I mean, they've they performed really, really well. Um, I think the offense is a lot more cohesive and dangerous now than it really has been at any other time, you know, really in like the Jays era. Um, and the defense has stepped up tremendously compared to last yeah. year. You know what I mean? I think having Porzingis at the rim, and I, I heard you talk about uh, Kata, you know, quietly. I yeah. mean, he, he um, man, he, he's giving them some great minutes. I mean, Cornette is too, but I mean, Kata's really like, you know, kind of a surprise yeah. piece on that interior. And um, man, I mean, my, my, my only like reservation outside of this trap game is I, I really need to see them give the Warriors like a thirty point. <laughs> like, as, I mean, I you know I like. Yeah. Res- listen, I respect Steph Curry like to the ultimate. Like he is a baller, one of the greatest of all time. But I sports hate him. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. I I, I, yes. I want to see them go down uh, mightily at our hands. But outside of that, man, I'm loving it. It's it's one of the best compliments that you can give somebody to say. I, I think it, it's it's funny because I remember seeing Isaiah Thomas, like the Detroit Pistons Isaiah Thomas, not mm-hmm. not the good Isaiah Thomas. Uh, <laughs> right. I saw I saw the the bad boy Isaiah Thomas at the Garden mm-hmm. uh, during the NBA Finals a couple of years ago, and I I, mm-hmm. I went up to him and I was like, "Look, I'm, I'm a kid of the '80s. Uh, the the best compliment I can pay you right now is to say that I have always hated you." And he <laughs> and he's like, "Right." Thank you. Thank you. Like that's if if you are a member of the opposition and the 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 fans of the other team hate you. Yeah. To me, I just like I just think of that as a basketball player. I'm like, yes. That's like, what you want. That just that thought makes me smile. Uh, yeah. I hope that like the greatest thing I would ever hope for as a basketball player is in the NBA is to have 29 other fan bases hate me because it means <laughs> right. I'm doing something right, you know, Absolutely. and not in the Dylan Brooks kind of way. No, you know, like no, Steph no. Curry kind of way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But yeah, so look, I, I agree with you. I think the Celtics, their offense has has really started to come around. I thought it was really interesting when Joe Missoula was talking about you know, we talk about sacrifice for everybody, but for Jason Tatum, he talks about reinvention because yeah. fact is Jason's not sacrificing anything. He's not the guy that's <laughs> sacrificing much. Right. Like he's always gonna have the ball in his hands. He's not going to lose any minutes, all that stuff. He can kind of do what he wants to do. Yep. However, the reinvention part is interesting because he, he does have to change. Like the usage will be the same. But he does have to change how that usage kind of comes around. Yeah. And I think the last bit of it is the thing that everybody's complaining about in the comment section. I'm sure you, you at, at, at the end of the Warriors game, when you saw Tatum, you know, take that step mm. back three pointer, yeah. it's yeah. it's the same thing that everybody's talking about. Right. That kind of stuff is, is the next part of the reinvention. Like start running some plays, start running off of, of other players and and doing doing a little bit more in that in those spots but I, what i what i really think is the best sign for these celtics is that it it still doesn't look finished this yeah. is still like yeah. it feels like there's a lot of sanding like you can see the chair that someone right. has built right. and you're like oh yeah this is going to look great all you got to do is sand it down paint it and you know put a coat of finish over it right and but the Celtics still have to do that stuff, yeah. which, yeah. you know, heading into, you know, New Year's is right around the corner. That's actually a good spot to be because you want to see them still have work to do. Yeah. So they have something to look forward to uh, rather than peaking now yeah, and just kind of cruising into the playoffs. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't want to peak too early. And I think um, last year we were kind of subject to that a little bit. But yes. Um, you know what I mean? But uh, I think when you're talking about Tatum's progression, like really how we played against L.A. is almost a perfect game from him. I mean, really controlling the pace, like outside of that second quarter. But like, you know, the playmaking, like he had that one, that left-handed dime down to Holiday. To Sam Hauser. Yeah, Yo, that was Hauser. Yeah, on the baseline. Yeah, that like, was nice. 
you know what I mean? Like, that's really what you want to see from him in terms of growing his game. Because I always see, you know, I'm a guy like, you know, I, I'm on Twitter a lot, right? And the comments are always about Tatum versus Luka. And who do you want? And who's better? And this mm-hmm. is why Tatum's better. This is why Luka's better. Whatever. I mean, I think that as Tatum grows with that playmaking aspect, that's the last piece of it where it's not even a conversation. Because really, I mean, offensively, they're pretty close. Um, You know, to your point, usage is way different, you know, two different offensive styles. So he's not going to be putting up those kind of crazy numbers. But, I mean, defensively, you know, he's worlds ahead of Luka. And, you know, as long as his playmaking continues to improve, you know what I mean, that's the last – that's really the last step he has to take. I just think, you know, it's hard when – I mean, you know he's a guy who puts in that work in the offseason and he trusts that Jay so much. He's got that confidence because he puts in the work. So it's like on one hand, you're glad that he has the confidence, but it's also, you know, you're seeing yeah. every, you know, every clutch situation where it doesn't work out. It's like, man, you are 6'10 and you can go by just about anybody in the league. Like, why are you not forcing the refs to either make a call at the rim or finishing the play? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good point, man. That, that, that's where he, he, he just needs to accept the numbers yeah. are what they are. Right. And you know, like the, the pull-up jumpers are, that that's not it. It's just not <laughs> it. For him. I don't know why though. I don't know why though. Cause he, I mean, it's just, you know, when, when look, he gets hot, I mean, you know, because they're contested. They're just True. they're they're contested above the break threes off the dribble. Yeah. You've got so the above the break threes are harder. The contested shots are harder. Off the dribble shots are typically lower percentage. So yeah. it's like those three things all together. Look, some guys are good at it. He he had one season where he was good at it. Right. One season where he was about average, and every other season he's been terrible at it. So he's just got to accept accept the facts, man. It just yeah. it's not a criticism necessarily of your right. game. It's just look, you're not. I, That's look, not, not the way you can finish. Right, you do rap songs. You're mm. not sitting there playing jazz, right? right. Like I, I mean, I don't know if you can. Maybe you can, but hey, like I love jazz. You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we love it. We love it, but I'm not. I'm not sitting here playing the piano because right. I can't. Right. So that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk yeah. about basketball, exactly. and so that's kind of the same thing. All yeah. right, let's let's get to the 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 thing that I I can't believe we're talking about this this way. The you Detroit got Pistons, <laughs> the Detroit Pistons. I cannot help but be nervous about it. Let's take a second here. We'll be right, right back to talk about the nerves, the nerves when it comes to the Pistons. Today's show is brought to you by uh, our good friends over at eBay Motors. They've teamed up with Josh Lloyd of the Lockdown Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Each week, they're going to get the bet. You're going to get the best fantasy picks all season long. So, whatever fantasy thing you're pre- you're uh, preparing for, whether it's uh, just scouting the waiver wire or whatever, uh, we're going to give you players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So here is who Josh has picked for this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. We've talked a little bit about Don, Dante Exum. We've talked a little bit about Isaiah Hartenstein, Jalen Johnson, Torian Prince, who has done, uh, you know, a good, done well shooting. And if you want to pick up three pointers from the Lakers, we saw him do that. Jaden Ivey is. We're going to see him now. Monty Williams has given him the minutes. Ivey has delivered. Now let's see if he keeps that role, keeps it consistent, but. When we're about to talk about the Pistons and what makes us nervous about facing the Pistons, other than just irrational fear, Jaden Ivey is, you know, playing, you know, has been playing well and he's a guy that you can pick up and maybe give yourself some production. Josh Lloyd is going to give you uh, what you need to win your fantasy championship there with the Lockdown Fantasy Basketball Podcast. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay Guaranteed Fit. 
is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown NBA. If you missed yesterday's show, it was me and it was Andy Kamenetsky of Lockdown Lakers uh, covering John Morant. They, the Nice to see Marcus Smart, by the way, doing work over there now that Jaw's back. They're 4-0. We talked a little bit about the Pistons. We talked about a bunch of stuff. So if you've missed that show, go check that out. Check out Lockdown NBA, rotating hosts all week long. So you can uh, get stay up on the league. All right, man. Okay. <laughs> the Detroit Pistons. Yeah. Right? They've lost 27 games in a row. They're 2-28, and 28, which means, by the way, quick math, they were 2-1 and one to start the season. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's right. To start the season. That's right. Uh, they are 2-28. and 28. They come in losing 27 in a row. They face the Boston Celtics, who are coming in off of a West Coast trip. And we know those West Coast trips, that first game at home, you come home, you relax, you're in your own bed, you you're, you still have that little bit of a jet lag, your body clock isn't right. That first game at home is always a little bit iffy. The Pistons coming in. Now, I'm not saying I expect the Pistons to win. I expect the Celtics to win. But even if you look at the um, the injury report, there's Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Jason with the ankle, questionable. Jalen with the back after the, the knee that he took from LeBron, questionable. Uh, it looks like Porzingis is going to play. Al Horford's going to play. So uh, that's they, they have their size. But it's, you know, not out of the question that the Celtics will be shorthanded. So, yeah. On a scale of one to ten, be ever ready. Yeah. How nervous are you facing the Detroit Pistons in this situation? <laughs> um, well, all right. One question: What time is the start? Is it it's it's a early? it's a normal seven thirty. Okay. It's not like a, a silly like afternoon game. Let me just right, right. let me just double check <laughs> since I got since I got the win total wrong like a moron before. Uh, it's a seven thirty. It's a seven thirty game okay. on the back to back against Toronto. I will say I'm glad that the back to back is Toronto and not like a good team, you yeah. know, because then that would have made this the super trap game. If oh, this yeah. was Detroit and then Philly, right. then that would have been. Yep, uh, completely overlooked. Now you yeah. got two crappy teams, so you're not overlooking one. You just got to go and play the teams in front of you. But anyway, sorry, you were right. saying. Oh no, uh, one to ten. I think I'm about a solid five, five to six. Um, I mean, to me, like we're talking about the progression that Tatum has to make. Like this type of focus that's going to be required to win this game is the last step in the evolution of the Celtics. They've got to you know, put teams away when they're, you know, clearly, um, you know, a better class of team than their opponent, um, you know, and, and take these games wire to wire. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's the reason why, you know, going back, of course, because this is recent, but, you know, it's the reason why we lost to Golden State, right? You take your no. eye off the ball, you know, no, but I know it's like, I feel like, you know, some people think like we harp on that kind of thing too much. You like the fans, you know, we kind of get, you know, caught up in those losses, but it's just like, those things are just indicative of what we've seen in the past season. So it's like a trigger, you know what I mean? As sure. Of course. Of course. For the, you know, mental health advocates, you know what I mean? That's, that's a trigger because it's like, hundred percent. you're losing in the same exact fashion that you lost before. And literally we could have had a championship already with this group if had these things not happened. So, you know, it bring it brings back all of that. So just say all that to say, as long as they have their focus, it should be a wire to wire victory. If they take their eye off the ball and depending on who's not playing, that could definitely, you know, open up some opportunities for Detroit. I'd be honest with you. I, I it would be, I think a good thing. For the Celtics, if one or both of the Jays don't play, mm. first of all, you, I'm let those guys rest, right? Like I, I take a day off. I'm I'm cool with that. But mm. when it, when one of your main guys isn't playing, there's a a focus there for somebody else. And 
there's there's opportunity for guys who don't normally get those opportunities. So your O'Shea Brissett's, Lamar yeah. Stevens, Shiva, Shiva McKaylock, those guys are coming to play hard yeah. because this is their opportunity to play hard. Right. And the Celtics, if, if let's say Tatum and Brown don't play, like I hate to say, I hate to be disrespectful to the Detroit Pistons, but you don't need Tatum and Brown to beat the Detroit Pistons because you still got right. Derek White, Drew Holiday, Kristaps Porzingis, and Al Horford. Like right. those guys should be enough. And when if you're shorthanded, those guys understand like, okay, Derek White, I got to be one of the main scorers now. I got to step up. Holiday, I got to step up. Porzingis, who's just always a matchup problem, he's got to step up. Yeah. So it might not be the worst thing in the world for the Celtics to strategically sit a couple of those guys to say, get your back right, get your ankle right, yeah. and let's let's just roll with the, the team that you have because the 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 Derek White, Drew Holiday, Kristaps Porzingis, Al Horford, and I don't know Sam Hauser starting lineup is still good enough to yeah. to beat the Pistons. Uh, right. But I will say, look. Look, the Pistons, they had they had the Nets. They had them in this game. And then they, then, the, then the the Nets, you know, kind of made their move and the, the Pistons just completely imploded, fell apart. Yeah, yeah. But just let's look at these the the Nets losses. Uh prior to that, they they had a home a, a back to back or a home and home uh with Brooklyn. So they lost by eleven. They lost to the Jazz by eight. They lost to the Hawks by six. Now Milwaukee blew them out. Philadelphia blew them out twice. Uh, they lost by eight to the Pacers. M Orlando blew them out. They lost by 14 to the Grizzlies. They lost by nine to the Cavaliers. There's a lot of like single digits, low double digits, which it's like, you're not getting crushed. They yeah. lost to the Nuggets by four. So mm -hmm. if you, if you take them lightly, exactly. You, you do. You're in for a little bit of a battle. Listen, Cade uh, so is it's Cade's legit. Yeah, Cade had yeah. 37 in the second half yeah. uh, on on Tuesday night. The, yeah. That dude is legit. So, yeah. and who's the, who's their center? Their young center, Jalen. Uh, or, uh, they are. Uh, who wait? Who are they starting now? They yeah, are yeah, starting uh, Dayron Sharp. Like He's oh no! Wait, no. I'm sorry, Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran. That, that boy Cause... is a. I mean, he is a problem down low, and that's why, like you. I mean, I think Al could probably take him, but like you don't want to play Al 35 minutes in this game. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. So yeah, I mean, he's he's a young dude who's a problem as well. So I I think you know Detroit has the makings of a competitive team. Like they have talent at a lot of positions. But they're really young. They have to learn how to win. And, you know, it's going to take time. They just got a new coach. You know, Monty's great, but it's going to take him time to implement, you know, what he wants with that team. So it's going to take some time. But they're, like I said, even, you know, on any given night in the NBA, you can get it from any team. It's, you know, you watch like uh, TNT and Chuck and Shaq and them, and they're saying, you know, listen, these guys are professionals. Like, if you don't show that's up, right. you will get your lunch eaten. And that's just the facts. That's it. That's 100% right. I mean, these guys, okay, 27 losses in a row. Ugh, right? Mm. We all get it. Yeah. Um, but it's not like, like, they, Cade said it in one of his post-game interviews. We're not, we're not, we're not this bad, you right. know? And it's just, right. you know, some, some bad luck, some injury stuff to start, some just young, like, they're they're bad. There's no doubt. They're bad, right? There's no sugarcoating this. But they're not this bad, right? And one of these, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they like finally broke through and mm -hmm. and went on like a little bit of a winning streak. Like all yeah. of a sudden, you win like three of four or something like that. Right. So right. Right. they're 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 a long ways away. But it's uh, I'm I'm very curious to see what how they get it together. Uh, I also would like to see them not get it together until their next game. So yeah, wait, wait one night and <laughs> then, and then you can go, uh, right. take and care of, you can start your winning streak. Right. All right. Let's see if the Celtics can get some separation. We'll talk about that when we come back. Today's show is brought to you by prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy, made fun because it's you against the projections. It's not you against sharks. It's not you against high powered computing. It's you against the projections and they set 
the projections, they'll say Derek White assists and they'll set it. Let's just say it's at seven. I didn't check, but uh, you would say more or less than whatever it is. And so they are, um, they are uh, setting these projections and you are uh, making your choice. And that's how you win. If you pick, you can pick two to six players. If you get all six, you can win up to 25 times your money. You don't have to get all six. You don't even have to get all of them right to get some money back. So that's what makes prize picks great. Uh, you can go into their combo leagues and you can combine football and basketball or baseball and basketball when it comes back or other sports and basketball. Just, I mean, I'm always going to put basketball in there or, you know, you can make sure you have the peace of mind. They have a reboot policy. So if you are uh, picking a, a player and he gets hurt and doesn't come back, that player is rebooted. That's insurance that no other daily fantasy sports platform has. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA Use the code Lockdown NBA for a first deposit match up to $100, right? Prizepicks.com slash Lockdown NBA. Use the code Lockdown NBA for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown Sports today, the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. So, uh, put it on, leave it on. It's a great way to get caught up in, in, you know, on everything. Every once in a while, Lockdown Celtics makes its uh, rotation on there. So go check it out. Uh, let's get back to the conversation here with B ever ready. And the Celtics have the easiest remaining schedule in the league. Uh, so that bodes well. There are upcoming games, Toronto, uh, Detroit, Toronto on the back-to-back, -back, San Antonio, then at OKC, home for Utah, Indiana twice, one of them's a back-to-back, -back, and a third game in four nights, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Houston, Toronto, San Antonio, Denver, Houston, Dallas, Miami, Clippers, New Orleans, and Indiana again. Three games against Indiana. Can we shake the Pacers at all? Come on. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like five games against the Pacers. Uh, so five games against the Pacers and five games against the New York Knicks. Uh, mm. that's, that's one of the weird quirks of the, uh, in season tournament, yeah. but let's just start short term Detroit, Toronto, San Antonio. Those should be three wins. OKC is going to be tough, mm -hmm. but you got Utah should be a win. Let's just say split those Indiana games. Minnesota is going to be tough. Milwaukee is going to be tough. So there's a chance there that the Celtics can pick up a few wins. The Celtics have been getting a lot of wins that, you know, maybe, uh, you'd think, Hey, this is, this is just an opportunity then for, for them to lose. Yep. And they still feel like they're stepping up and, and winning these games. Do you think that this is an opportunity here for them to, to get some separation? They're only a game and a half up on, on the Milwaukee bucks. Yeah. Game and a half up on Milwaukee, three games ahead of the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, I would love to see them get some separation here by the all-star break. Absolutely. I mean, I think that that's what Joe's got to be preaching to them, you know, in the locker room is, hey, you know, we have the easiest remaining schedule. We need to, you know, go ahead and finish strong. I mean, definitely through the All-Star break, you know, they should, you know, I would say in a perfect world, you know, be five up on, on Milwaukee by, by the All-Star break. That's what I would like to see, you know. Um, will they? Uh, I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> well, because, I mean, when you talk about, you know, OKC, Indy, um, Milwaukee, Minnesota, you know, those are some tough games coming up. And, um, you know, those teams, what I hate, you know, is the, uh, you want to say like the Gabe Vincent effect or the, uh, yeah. Matt, the, the Strauss effect, right? You know, you got guys who come in and they got this game circled on their calendar. They know it's going to be primetime television. They're facing the best team in the league. Everybody's watching. Okay. I'm going to put on a show for all my folks who are watching. And then, you know, you, you come out and you have, you know, Evan Fortier getting 30 points off the bench and it's like, <laughs> okay, right. Right. And then they go back, you know, and, and they can't see the court, you know, in the next 10 games. So, yeah. you know, outside of, you know, those kind of outlier performances, you know, I think we have a good chance to, to get some separation. 
here's here's the the part about the schedule, and I you know who knows what's going to happen moving forward because the, the Celtics are due for some sort of skid, right? They, they they have only lost two games in a row once. At some point, it's going to happen again, uh, and and may, hell, maybe it'll be three, maybe it'll be four. Um, every team goes through it. The Celtics will go through. We all have to like get ourselves in that headspace. The Celtics <laughs> will go on a losing streak at some point because it's just naturally going to happen. Yeah. But here's here's the, the 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 maybe the the stat that should be the most encouraging stat for Celtics fans. Celtics are 17 and 5 against above 500 teams. And not only are they 17 and 5, which is a great record, right? 17 wins is the most in the league. Right. That's 23 games out of their 29 that are uh, above uh, 22 games. 17 plus five is 22. Yes. That's, that's, you know, I get, I get, I'll figure it, I'll figure it out at some point. Listen, 22 right. games. <laughs> my math is so horrible. <laughs> 22 games of their 29 that they've played. So seven against teams below 500. Which, as quick scan, I it looks like it's the lowest, the fewest in the league, in, against teams below five hundred. Yep. Uh, the twenty-two is the most in the league against teams above five hundred, tied with Denver, who has also uh, played twenty-two, and they're twelve and ten. Yep. So, um, the Celtics have played a lot of tough teams, right. and. If if you want the best sign, the reason it's it's so encouraging, they're twenty three and six. They're at the top of the league, and they've had this incredibly tough schedule, where they've played twenty two games against good teams or teams with winning records or five hundred and above. They've won a majority of those, uh, and now they're heading into a spot where things should be kind of easing up a little bit. And I guess the biggest question moving forward is. Do they do they carry that same mentality right. against the lesser teams that got them to seventeen and five against the teams that are five hundred and above? Yeah, that's that's the main question. Honestly, like we were talking about earlier, can they maintain the level of focus that's required to accomplish the task? I mean, that's really it because we know from a talent perspective and a performance perspective. They're the best team in the league, and they've played as such. So there's really no excuses at this point. And, you know, I think that's a good thing, and it's, you know, a responsibility, right? You know, they've got to go ahead and put that on their shoulders and, you know, go ahead and carry it out, you know, day by day. But I think that, you know, from what we've seen so far, the mentality is there, you know, starting from the top, from Brad, from Wick, from Joe, you know, they've really – kind of, you know, taking that, you know, day by day mentality, you know, we're going to put on our hard hat and, and go to work every day. So, um, you know, we're seeing the right things, um, you know, and they're saying the right things, you know, when you listen to them like post game and, you know, what they're focused on in terms of, you know, sharing the basketball and sacrificing for each other and, you know, locking down defensively. I mean, cause that's the thing. I mean, when you have a team that's, you know, shooting, 40 53s at night you know you have to be able to rely on your defense every yeah. single night you know what i mean yeah. because the, those threes aren't going to always be there as we've seen in the yes. state game but i mean <laughs> <laughs> but beyond that right <laughs> uh, i'm telling you it, it burns me it burns me i but, know yeah you are not alone you yeah. are not alone yeah yeah but um no i mean like i said they you know they're they're right there i think um, you know, if they push the way that they need to, you know, they should be able to cruise into, you know, the number one overall seed going into the playoffs. You know, hopefully we have everybody healthy. You know, that's really the main thing, honestly, regardless of seeding. I think we've seen, like, based on how they played this first quarter of the season, listen, it's not going to really matter about seeding. It's not going to matter about home court. They can beat any team in the league anywhere. I mean, yeah. it's just they have to go out and do it. That's right. All right. Well, this was a fun show. Do you want to share with the folks what you were doing earlier today? Ah, well, just so everybody knows, we've been working on a 
updated theme song, a new theme song for the pod. Um, listen, John was uh, yes. gracious, gracious enough to, you know, yes. uh, fall for my little bit of uh, IG bait when I put it out there because I'm I'm not too <laughs> active. <laughs> but I said, man, I, I really think that, you know, we should put, you know, a new spin on the theme. What do you guys think? John was the first one in the comment. Let's do it. Yes. So I yes. Said, Say less. Hell um, yes. You know what I mean? Oh, so, that's good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You guys will get that uh, as soon as we can, we can, you know, get some finishing touches on it. Uh, mm. hear it. And, I'm excited. Uh, John, for that. John gave me the seal, seal of approval. So I was, happy yes, I heard, I heard the early version. I am, I am very excited about this. This is going to be fun. It's it's different. It's different than the one we have now. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. I thought the first it's... the first one was a little West Coast type flavor. So sure. I wanted to make sure that this was a little bit more, you know, kind of East Coasty Boston, yeah, uh, you know, flavor for us. A little, and you know, I think appropriate for the Celtics playing playing faster. A little bit more of a little bit more upbeat. A little bit more up tempo. That's right. Uh, in That's this right. this That's one. Right. So That's right. That's uh, I'm right. excited. I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. Uh, yeah. Be ever ready. Uh, you want to you want to plug anything? You want to plug your stuff there real quick? Man, absolutely. Uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity on the platform. Like I said, um, you guys can follow me. Uh, you got at be ever ready on Twitter uh, at be ever ready on IG. Uh, my website is be ever ready rap.com. So, you know, you guys can follow me there and Bandcamp as well. I'm there. All my music is there. Got about 14 projects in total. Hoping to drop about four more in the next twelve to eighteen months, so we can we can uh, you know really continue to you know drop some some consistent uh, quality music for the people. I just have one thing that I have to get off my chest, John. I hope you'll enjoy. Ooh. Okay. One thing. All right. My issue with sports media talking about Ooh. why the Celtics aren't the greatest franchise in NBA history. And Ooh, it's okay. kind of a downer, but I gotta say it. Because these guys always want to put the Lakers ahead of us, but they <laughs> never acknowledge Reggie and Len. Yeah. If we had those two guys, I know. Everything is different. The whole league is different. Yeah. And no other franchise has had to deal with those type of losses, and nobody's true. still caught up to us. That's it's true. not even close. And I think that anybody who has that conversation and doesn't mention that is disingenuous and they don't know the history of the game. So we got to say that, listen, we're the number one franchise. We will remain so. And that's just all there is to it, man. Hey, that's a great way to go out. So on that note, I appreciate you very much. Thanks for hopping on, man. Absolutely, man. Really so a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, a lot of fun over here. Uh, over here with Be Ever Ready. Uh, this was this was great. So this is the first of I, when I put out uh, that the uh, I was taking donations for my sister's GoFundMe for her, uh, you know, her late husband who passed away uh, before Christmas for uh, with uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, I want to make sure that I note that that Be Ever Ready was generous enough to make a donation. I had been saying like I'm raffling it off to have like co-hosts. Um, I, I, I kind of reconsidered that and I'm not going to do a full raffle. I'm just going to have like as many of the people I can have on because everybody, so many people stepped up for my family and that was just so heartwarming and touching. And uh, I personally want to thank everybody. So this is, this is number one. And, and I wanted to have be every, ever ready on first because he's our, our theme song, uh, because he's working on a new one. He's a great Celtics fan. I now have known him for a little while, and I'm very excited for the new theme song, but also very generous uh, supporting my family. So I can't thank him and everyone else who made a donation enough. More co-hosts on the way, more people hopping on for segments along the way. It's going to be spread out for you know throughout the course of the season. So if you made a donation, you're wondering when it's it's definitely going to happen, but not like it's not going to all be at once. So thank you all so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're a regular listener, I would love it right now. If you shared the podcast, spread the word, tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.